Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Solution Sunday, where the soul is the solution. I am Lisa Warner, and I am the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing, and I teach my clients how to heal their bodies naturally. And today on Solution Sunday, I am so excited to have my dear friend and my personal virtual assistant, <laughs> Anna Lucia Izzo, with us. Anna is the founder of Holy Banana, and she is the author of Holy Sun Strength. So did I get that right? <laughs> Holy Sun Strength. She is a yoga teacher and let's have let's have anna talk a little bit about all of the fabulous things that she does anna thank you so much for coming today i'm so excited to be able to talk about whole health body mind and soul well thanks lisa i appreciate that um a little bit about me i i'm 26 um i'm a local to lake placid i help lisa with her virtual assistant work her emails her her website um but yeah, I, I founded Holy Banana. It is a platform where I share my journey through um, eating disorder, depression, how I came to live a holistic, healthy life, and how yoga played a part in that. There's a lot of other things that I incorporate as my life has adjusted through different seasons and chapters. Um, but that's what Holy Banana is. And then Holy Sun Strength, um, I authored an ebook for people to build their yoga practice from the ground up off of the building blocks of the sun salutations. Um, so that's that. But off of my work, um, I'm a fitness coach. I have a dog. I love being outside. I'm training for the Ironman. So lots of things. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things going on. I'm really enjoying. I'm busy. I'm very busy, but I'm really enjoying life um, as it is right now. So I appreciate Lisa having me on to talk about something I'm so passionate about. <laughs> Yay. You know, and that's really so much of health is enjoying life. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I went through a chapter where I wasn't enjoying life and I was getting away from the things that I love doing. And as I've gone through that chapter, I'm, I'm coming back to doing the things that I love and I'm realizing without them, the re we have these passions inside of us to do the things that we love for a reason. It's because you are meant to be doing them. And all of us are gonna have different things that make us run. Um, but doing self-care, yoga, eating well, I've been finding myself just like even training for Ironman, if it's not a great day outside and I have six miles to go, I'm like having fun with it. Like I have my headphones in, I'm running those miles. And I think it's really important that whatever you're doing, um, you find the things that you enjoy because that means that you're living in true alignment with yourself and that's how you're healthy <laughs> exactly you know when when I found myself facing cancer it, I was miserable my life had taken on like a life of its own that was not mine mm -hmm. and I was not a happy camper at all period and I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that that was the actual problem, that my body wasn't the problem. Yeah. Like I knew that my body was in really bad shape because I was in really bad shape. Mm -hmm. I was not happy. I wasn't enjoying my life. I wasn't doing the things that I came here to do. So I knew that that was what I actually needed to address that pills were not going to help me <laughs> figure out my life <laughs> like <laughs> it's an internal alignment issue like when we're when we're not completely um aligned with ourselves i actually i authored a a course that i've taken two groups of women through on this called holy you and it's all about getting aligned with the truest version of yourself and there's no like there's no end point on that because you're constantly going to be evolving in life and I think it's important to keep that in mind because you might think like okay right now I'm doing exactly what I'm meant to be doing but that might change a year or so from now nothing ever happens by coincidence everything happens for a reason I truly believe that um but I agree that when you're when you're not in alignment 
your body, when you're not in alignment and you're not choosing to address that or deal with it, because there, there are signs when you're not in alignment, there's going to be subtle signs that your body or just energy tries to throw at you to kind of like wake you up, like signals, like <laughs> do not enter wrong way, go the other way. Um, but we tend to ignore them because that often involves change, discomfort, things that we don't really want to feel. Um, but when we're in, when we're out of that alignment and we're not make like we're not doing what we need to do to come back into alignment, that's often when our body does something for us. Like when I was, um, I'm going through a divorce, and when I was in that chapter of my life, I wound up in the hospital in the ER three times with cysts that just kept coming up due to these conflicts that were happening. And eventually it clicked that like, this isn't something wrong. Like I'm not doing anything wrong in my body. Like I, I eat healthy, I exercise. Like when it comes to my diet and exercise habits, like I'm by the book, probably like <laughs> level 99 out of 100. Like I take <laughs> such good care of my health with balance. Of course, I love chocolate cake and ice cream, but um, it's, it's funny how, well, it's not funny, but it is like clockwork, how your body will just like you, like you endured cancer. And there were things going on in your life that propelled you into that state to wake you up, to like change course. And similar for me, like when all these things started happening um, in my body, like my body was just like a disaster. And for taking care of my health as much as I did, I shouldn't have had these things that were going on in my body. Um, and when I changed course, I saw a change and it's going to ebb and flow. Like I've, this winter, I've gone through times where my body has freaked out again, for lack of a better term. But that shows me that like, there's something that I'm doing, like get into more alignment. And when looking at that, like I wasn't prioritizing self-care as much um, over the winter. So there's always, there's always a reason um, for everything. And I believe that. And I, I think that a lot of it comes down to, are you living the life that you're meant to? Are you taking care of your body the way that it was meant to be taken care of? Because our world does a phenomenal job of indoctrinating us with methods that we should be following that are doing so much harm, um, yeah. so much harm. And it's like, I have, I'm thankful for this intuitive um, connection with my body where I can sit and, and this took me a long time to get there, but with like meditation practices and yoga, but I can sit there and just check in and say, okay, what do you need? Um, and I think that's a really important thing to work towards for everyone, because when you can ask your body what you need and you're actually listening, it, it will absolutely tell you what you need. For sure. You know, and we really don't think about our thought patterns you know, how when we're worried and we're stressed and we're depressed and we don't think about the body-mind connection and how all of those thoughts are directly impacting our bodies. And when our thoughts are out of alignment with our soul, mm -hmm. then the body literally adapts itself to those thought patterns. And it literally tries to help us survive whatever the, the crisis in our thinking is. Mm -hmm. So when our bodies display these, you know, freak out symptoms that they have, it's never the body's problem. There's never a problem with the body. The body is simply pointing at the thoughts that we're thinking that are out of alignment or the actions that we're doing that are out of alignment. Absolutely. And I can credit you for um, helping me see that my body is always doing exactly what it needs to be doing. Um, that was something that my mindset, I, I wasn't of that mindset before working with you in any capacity. Um, I always felt like, oh, like, and, and the fear, like we've, we've talked a lot about fear and working together. I used to be crippled by fear. Like I would, I would get sick <laughs> and like I would be crippled in fear, like, oh my gosh, like, what if this means I can't train for two weeks? What if, like, what if this is going to turn into something more? And when you, like, when you feed that fear, it is just going to fester whatever is going on in your body energetically. Um, but 
Instead, if you incorporate love and direct love towards yourself, that's going to clear that all out. So I've used that myself. And um, yeah, your bot, your what is it? You attract the energy you put out. I'm not saying that word for word the way that it's quoted, but that idea I 100% um, have seen happen in my life. Um, just a small example, financially going through divorce is difficult, you know? Um, and I used the mantra, I have more money than I will ever need. And in six months time, I have come to a place where I can breathe better just by using this mantra, nothing changed in my, like how many jobs I'm working. Um, it was simply my mindset. And I just, I feel like I'm less stressed and anxious over it. Um, and everything feels a little bit more grounded. So just a small example of your energy goes to like where you're feeding it and by using mantras and practices and I'm not perfect I, I have a lot of work to go on these things but I am incorporating as best I can as I'm I'm like moving through this time in my life um it's it's kind of like this where I'm like going up but there's speed up. um but yeah it's it's crazy how like you change your mindset and you change your life and it's it's very true it is really literally that simple changing our mindset is really not that easy because we no. become married to these beliefs we believe that you know there is one truth and that that's the only truth there is and like, well if you're told something long enough you do start to believe it um exactly. and I, I the whole nature versus nurture conversation I honestly think that we all have incredible nature that we're born with, like divine nature that we're born with. And we are exactly perfect the way that we are born. But nurture is like 95% of that. Like, how are you nurtured? What are you taught growing up? What are you told? How are you um, managed when you're dealing with emotions or going through crisis? Like, what do you learn from those experiences? And that shapes you so much um and I never like I never would have thought about all these big thoughts <laughs> uh when I was younger but as I've gone through life which I'm sure it's the same for everyone you don't think about it until it's relevant to you um yeah it's it's crazy to me how important that nurture part of your life is and my dog just unplugged my computer so one second I have to plug it back in <laughs> He's in his uh, very active stage of the morning. He's waiting for me to walk him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Beautiful. You know, it's so true. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us this morning. We have Brenda and Delbert and Shannon and Christina. And Hi, Christina. <laughs> and Diane and Keith. Good morning, everyone. Um, you know, we do, we live, I love this your observation about the nature and the nurture because we live in a society that is so judgmental that we don't live in a nurturing society no. this society is incredibly intolerant of anything different anything anybody you know free thinkers you know the ones who kind of buck the system you know, the system is not is not a nurturing system. It's a system of crime and punishment and control and domination. And it's incredibly difficult for anybody to feel nurtured and safe in the in this environment. Yeah, it it takes a lot of strength. And I think Part of it is there, there are born leaders in this realm of like people who are born with the purpose of standing up against the like the societal norms. Um, and it's scary. And what's, what's fascinating though, is it's scary to have to like go through that time in life where it's like, no, I'm defying this because it does not feel right and good in my body. Mm -hmm. But if you look back, 
every experience that you've ever had in your life has prepared you for that moment. Like every single moment in your past has prepared you for this moment in the present. And when we look at that and like, we're having moments of doubt, like, no, like I'm, I'm just going to go with the flow. Like I'll eat that crap food and pretend like I feel okay. And like, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll like go with this societal norm and do this just to like, I don't want to rustle the waters when you're like fearing, feeling fearful, like look back at all the things that have happened in your life. They like, they prepared you for this moment. Um, so I think that, I, I mean, I noticed that in my own life where like the things that have played out over the past year, like, oh my gosh, I never thought that I had the strength to deal with half of it. Um, but here I am, I'm standing and I'm doing okay. <laughs> and I'm on my own. And like, it, it just goes to show like, you, you might not think that you have the strength um, to do those things that are best for you. But in the end, life has given you exactly what you need in order to like be here and do what you need to do in this moment. So sometimes we resist that though, and just, um, go the easy route of saying, Oh no, I can't, which I don't like that phrase because you can, you can do anything you set your mind to. You really can. I believe that, um, you're just choosing not to. Exactly. You know, and in the end, it's far, far easier to stand up for yourself and live your own truth than to simply bow and cave to the, the current, uh, to the current, <laughs> whatever the current is that's trying to drag us in, in all of these other directions. I think that's a lesson learned though. Like mm -hmm. it, it, that, that's a tough lesson learned, but I think it's one that's important that everyone learns on the their own time because you you can't force someone into like just do your own thing just do your own, and like you they have to come to that strength um and place where they're ready for that you know I mean for myself even looking back like and I'm sure that you can relate like coming into my own and saying no like I'm not okay with this like I'm gonna do this differently yikes <laughs> it is terrifying um but as you, as you do it more, like it's stepping stones first, it's like, no, I, I don't want to eat that. Or no, I, I don't want to go there. Or I, I, I don't want to watch that, um, small things that eventually lead up to bigger things. So I don't at all want to come off as like, just overnight, you're going to be able to like stand up for yourself because <laughs> it's a learning process and it's, it creates emotion that can be overwhelming if you do too much too soon. It's the type of thing that I think is really important that you gradually work into. And if you have those small steps of, oh, I, I did that, I can do this. Eventually those steps will grow and you'll be able to make those bigger decisions for yourself with confidence and lack of um, like questioning if you did the right thing. You'll just know that you did. Exactly. You know, and it's so easy to, to know when we do the wrong thing. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. You know, I let them talk me into doing that. I knew I shouldn't have done that, you know, whatever it is, you know. And so it really does turn out to be far easier to simply say no and to simply, you know, tune in and do the things that are in full alignment with who we are. Because then we don't, we don't have those, those regrets or the like, oh no, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. But, you know, it's not really, it's not really taught in our society, you know, Isn't, but we need no, to listen to the that. teacher, do what you're told, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that, you know, I've seen, like, I'm starting to see subtle changes back towards like the, the natural, um, tendencies that we were born with, you know, like very subtle, like in TV even like behind these, like I was watching this show called The Ultimatum, which is such a stupid show. And I think it's ridiculous. It's like one of these like dating shows. I don't know if you've ever watched like um, uh, Love is Blind or like Bachelor or Bachelorette, like they're, they're ridiculous shows. But in The Ultimatum, I was realizing as I was watching it, like um, th these people were giving their significant others an ultimatum because they wanted to they, they wanted to get married but the other one didn't and I feel like we're and like the reason like they wanted to get married they wanted to have kids and I see these like natural shifts of like these innate 
tendencies in us to like want to I, I don't know how to put it but like I was watching this tv show and I was like wait like they they just kind of like want they kind of want to do what was natural for us in the beginning um so I I don't know like because I feel like there's societal pressure what I'm trying to say is I feel like there's societal pressure to like be single be in like be independent do what you want to do especially as a woman like the whole feminist movement which I fully believe is important um I, like, I think there's pressure almost as a woman now to like be independent, do your own thing when it's, it's okay to like admit if you want to be married and have kids, it's also okay to admit that you want to be independent and do your own thing and run a business and be successful. And it's okay to do both together. But I found it fascinating that like subtle things like this in like TV and music and like things in our world where there's been like such a push to do one thing. I feel like people are starting to balance out where they're like, well, no, I, I kind of want to do this for me. And just because you're doing that, that doesn't mean that I have to do that too. You know, I don't know if I explained that well, but my intuition while watching the show was like, oh, okay. So we're not so like, like extreme and going one direction. We're kind of like balancing it out again. Um, so anyway, that came to mind and I thought I would try to explain it. I don't know how well of a job I did <laughs> that, but I think that we're with this whole like shift over the past couple of years, I think we're all kind of starting to settle back into that, like doing the things that like all align with us rather than going with societal norms. So I am happy to see that because it makes me feel like there are um, like, there's something coming down the pipeline of not feeling so like, not feeling so pushed by society, you know? Like, if, I feel like a shift, I guess, is a really lo- short way of saying what I just said in a really long way. <laughs> yeah, well, I, we are, we are going through the shift of consciousness yeah. where we are as a society, as humanity, we are shifting dimensions. We are moving from the third dimension into the fifth dimension. Basically, you know, if you think of of like from negative to positive, you know, a scale or, you know, like the negative would be like that, like shame and guilt and fear and, you know, all of those negative emotions, yeah. you know, the positive with the the peace, the ease, the harmony, the joy, you know, the society has been in the negative for a really long time. And we are moving all of us together are raising the frequency, raising our consciousness and moving back into harmony, which would be moving back into a more balanced, more simple, organic lifestyle. It's, it's very hopeful. To to live. See, it's hopeful to see more people like even I live around the lake and I see people walking the lake all the time. Like even just like getting outside, getting fresh air, like there's this shift in, oh, like I should be taking care of myself. And although it's like, there's still stats that make you feel really depressed if you looked at them, <laughs> like they're, they're out there. If you look out your window though, you see the hope that there is in the world. And like with like our food system, like people are starting to wake up to it with like, healthcare there's so there's so much like there's so many avenues we could go down in the conversation but I I just it's discouraging if you look for the discouragement and I like I can get caught up in that sometimes too but I think it's really hopeful to see that there is a shift happening people are asking the question like why don't I feel good because you're not moving because you're not eating well because you're not living in alignment okay So how do I fix these things? And then they're pursuing how to fix these things. It's, I think that seeing this shift is a hopeful thing, even if it's minuscule, like on a small scale of this huge, huge world, um, seeing it in even like, for example, my roommate, like she has been working so hard to start exercising and eating healthier over the past month. And just seeing one person change like that, like working to better herself, is so inspiring. Like it keeps me going sometimes where I'm like, oh, I don't want to train right now. But she, like seeing her work so hard on herself, if we all did that, like think about like the, the elevated energy we'd have um, pulling each other up to work on ourselves like that. So yeah, it's, 
is surround yourself by people that make you feel hopeful, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Keith says, I truly believe how we do one thing is how we do everything. The That's last few years have been very telling. I've learned that I didn't really know some of the people I thought I knew. Um, the amount of people who will stand in their truth and power is smaller than I had led myself to believe. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's oh, really yeah. Isn't I, it? Raise your yeah. hand if you've lost people in the last couple of years because of your personal beliefs. <laughs> yeah. I'm in that group. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, and I think that the more, like, that could be taken in two ways, I, in my opinion. One, okay. So I'm going to lose these people. So I'm just going to change who I am so that I don't lose people and then avoid abandonment. Or I'm going to actually like take this opportunity to be myself unapologetically in every single way that I possibly can and attract the right people. And then you're actually aligned in not only who you are, but who you're surrounded by. And that is a shift that I've seen in my life over the past year, my friend groups, everything has changed. Like everyone in my life, minus my family, like my direct siblings mm -hmm. are people that were not in my life prior to last year. And what I love about it is these people, I can be myself around them. Like I can say what I really think. I can do what I want to do. I can conduct myself as Anna would. And I'm not criticized and I'm not um, made to feel like I'm too much. It, it, and I think what Keith said is super important that um that when those things happen we see the truth in people and whether they're true friends or not and it really like helps us weed out the places that are that are not hopeful you know they're not giving us hope for a better future and we need to go find places that are so i like that keith <laughs> the saying um who you are like it matters who you are something about behind closed doors, like, who are you behind closed doors? And I think about that often, like, okay, like, you're gonna do all these things to take care of yourself. And like, share them with the world, because that's what I do. I share my story, I share my journey. And then behind closed doors, who are you? And I think it's really important not only to show up for yourself behind closed doors when no one's watching, but it's also really important to, like, share that you're not perfect. And sometimes behind closed doors, like I mess up. Sometimes I don't meditate. Sometimes I don't eat healthy. Sometimes I don't sleep well and prioritize getting outside. And sometimes my mind does race and I let my mind race and I like go down that spiraling road of thoughts. I think that it's really important to admit where we fall short because it allows other people to see like, oh, even though I've fallen short, I don't have to, like, I don't have to quit. Like it doesn't mean that I'm not worthy of it. Um, so yeah, living behind closed doors as the person that, <laughs> be the dog you're, be the person your dog thinks you are. There you go. <laughs> exactly. There you go. That sums it up well. <laughs> uh, yeah, he says, I love what you shared about born leaders, Anna Lucia. And Thank the you. natural yeah. born leaders are stepping up and out. It's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, we are, we are here, they're, the, the light bringers on this planet, the ones who are here to help with the shift of consciousness, the ones who have never fit in, the ones who have always felt like the misfits because they didn't think like everyone else and they saw a bigger picture and they want to live in peace and harmony with the planet, with each other. They want to live a more natural lifestyle. Yeah. And, you know, we start to look at at what's going on in our society, you know, why are, why do we have the, the sickest, un, most unhealthy society? And we start to look and we see that it's really difficult to be healthy in a world where they're spraying pesticides on all of the foods. They're spraying chemicals and heavy metals out of airplanes into the air. They're, they're spewing chemicals into the rivers and lakes and streams. They're like, 
it's really, really hard to live in a polluted environment yeah, and not, not ingest the pollution, you know, not make our bodies toxic simply by just breathing. You it's know? true. I mean, there, I, um, oh my gosh, there's so many things I could say on this. There's so many things. I feel like our bodies, like I'm looking at the field behind you. Like if we were to just literally go live in that field and eat things that grew from the earth, mm -hmm. we'd be fine. Actually, we'd be fine. And we'd probably be better than we are cooped up in boxes that have heat and air. like our bodies weren't meant to, to be in these environments. They weren't like controlled, uh, sterile environments that are filled with things for our comfort, but are completely in um, contrast with our biology. Like it just doesn't make sense with what we're doing. I mean, it does because they're trying to make money and they'll do anything to make a buck off of our health, but it drives, it <laughs> drives me crazy. Like the air thing, fragrant, um, fragrance is something that's put in candles. I have only candles that are like essential oil scented. Um, I don't, I cannot do like, I don't know if you've ever been to like gone to Marshall's and been in the candle aisle. That used to be me. Like I loved candles. I would always get migraines though. And I never connected the two until I learned more about it. There are um, the ingredients fragrance. It's in shampoo. It's in soap. It's in detergent. It's in candles. It's in cleaners. It's in everything and it could be one of like 1800 different chemicals because fragrance is like it just falls underneath that category and they don't have to disclose what it is because the fda sucks <laughs> i'll say it um but organization, I'll say it. <laughs> yeah so the the fragrance that is something like trying to keep your home clear of that and when i moved in with my roommate because before i lived on my own like um, when I was married, like it just was how it was. I did not allow those things into my house, but now that I like, okay, like I have to adjust to living with another human. I told her right off the bat, like, if you have candles, you can't burn them. Like I, we, <laughs> we cannot have, I was like, I will fund our candles. If you really, really want candles, like I will make sure that they are good, clean candles, but I won't use the ones that are scented with, with fake fragrance. And I told her dish soap, dishwasher soap, laundry soap. I was like, I will buy them, but I will not use the stuff with dyes and fragrance in them. So she shifted all of that. And she's, I mean, it wasn't a negotiable for me. It was a non-negotiable. Um, and then also like, um, even like, even the Swiffer that we use to clean the floor, like oh. the liquid in that Swiffer jet has fragrance in it like it is so hard to keep your world free because if you think about it like your neighbor's dryer thing points out oh. in your yard and the dryer sheets that they use have toxins oh. and then you're breathing those chemicals oh. it's just like how do you keep your world free of all this when you're surrounded by it and really the at That's the end of the day you do the best you can do you, you can you control the things you can and you like you have to let the other things go. Like you can't control everything, but it's like um, like a little sand timer, like little by little it fills, like very little. And if you just let a little sand out, it's not a lot, but if you let that run over time, it varies and it's a lot of sand. So even if like, oh, I'll burn the candle just tonight because she really wants to, like whatever, it's not a big, that's a little, that as you do that adds up to a lot. So. I mean, shampoo and soap. And when we get into the food thing, let's talk about food for a second. Yes. Lisa knows how passionate I am about this. You cannot walk through the aisles. I mean, at least in our town, Lake Placid, we have an Aldi, we have a Price Chopper, and we have a Hannaford. There is not a single dressing in Aldi or Price Chopper that I will buy because every single one, I kid you not, every single one has sunflower, safflower, canola, cottonseed, or um rapeseed or palm oil in it what like I think those are the seven I don't think I forgot any but there are these crappy oils that are literally like carcinogenic when they make them go look up how they make canola oil because cool. after you watch that you will not buy anything with canola oil in it we are literally putting 
sludge that it's like black is black sludge that they have to dye back to white to put on the shelf for people to buy but it's cheap to make so that's what it's so disgusting and they actually put heart healthy on these oils they're not healthy they are clogging our systems they are like they're chemicals they're toxins that we're literally putting in our body so the food system like go every when you go to the grocery store next time look like pick something up and see if it has one of those oils in it i guarantee you 75 percent of the time what you're picking up will have it even almond milk um like these coconut milks that are coming out it's better to just have whole milk dairy and if you haven't had it for a while adjust your system back into it i was in that phase where i didn't have dairy for a really long time um, and i created an intolerance because i was drinking all of these other alternatives that i thought were better because dairy can be inflammatory well these oils were actually causing more inflammation than than i thought i didn't even know at the time but um sugar pick it up does your does your food that you're buying have added sugar probably most things do um it's so i don't like how hard the food system has made it for us to be healthy and not to mention cost like you go to the grocery store and you buy from the outside aisle which you can't even say outside aisles anymore because they're starting to like fill in like next to the strawberries they'll have everything for the strawberry shortcake and like next to the i don't know the meat they'll have everything to make fried chicken i don't know they're just like wherever they can they're pushing it at you um but like i was saying the dressings there's only one i use only use primal kitchen because they don't use any bad oils that are um they have okay heating points like they're not bad if like i forget the word oh i cannot think of the word oxidate oxidize i think um but like even olive oil if you leave on the table with clear glass that oil will oxidize and um become toxic for your system like all these little things that we're not learning we're we're being told to stay inside and stay away from each other and wear a mask okay but what about teaching us about our olive oil and what oils are really bad for us and all this stuff I, there's i could go on for days and lisa knows this but um well, i think look at look at our world look at this amazing earth this beautiful planet that we live on yeah food comes right out of the ground why are, we disconnecting, why are we disconnecting right. humanity from the natural fuel it was intended right. for? <laughs> free mushrooms corn where did all those plants come from yeah. they were they were growing right out of the ground for free yeah. and now like without any chemicals without right just like pure food right out of the ground this earth is designed to provide everything we need it is literally for free it is right it's, it's called so, man-made for a reason exactly like, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. all of the food when you look at the grocery store like the food that grows for free out of the ground is organic, it's natural. And now we have a little tiny segment of the of the grocery store that has organic. Yeah. All like the rest of the stuff is filled with chemicals yeah. or it is simply processed factory stuff that they call food. Yeah. Like it's literally not healthy for us. And then we look at all the stuff that is produced for the microwave. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, let's, the microwave is a whole nother, my goodness. Like, like years ago, I was like, wait a minute what is this machine actually doing to all the molecules here? I was yeah. like, this is, this cannot possibly be healthy. No. Oh, it's just heating them up. 
how is it heating them up? I know someone that it goes to show that it actually does change the structure of the food. Yeah. You know, I know someone who is allergic to apples. She cannot eat apples. She like her face gets all itchy. She really reacts. She gets a rash. Her her throat gets itchy. Like she cannot eat apples. But if she microwaves the apple for 30 seconds before she eats it, she doesn't have a reaction. Oh. But she can't eat cooked apples or raw apples, but she can eat microwaved apples. Is that not disgusting? No, interesting. Disgusting. Um, so I think that that, I mean, that goes to show like there's something about the microwave that is changing the food that you are eating. Exactly. And if you look at, they've done studies with water and they've, they've taken plants and they've, they've fed plants with normal water and then with microwave water the yeah. plants with the microwave water curled up and died yeah so Not it kills all of the living life force energy that mm -hmm. is in whatever is in you know what this beautiful planet gives us this food for free that is filled with living life force energy and then we take it and we genetically modify these foods, which what you're making it better than nature made these things. You're going to improve upon perfection. Really? It's not even like some of these subs, like the glyphosate and um, like mon like the all the chemicals that they spray on our food. It's not like, and like even the oils and the gums, don't get me started on the gums, xanthan gum, guar gum, um, gel and gum. Those are, ugh. just yeah. think about like pouring a tube of that down your body. Like that's just one of my, okay, two things. I don't want to get off track on this one though. Um, in, your, in Europe, a lot of these ingredients are banned. Yes. Why are they not banned? Like they have been proven to cause issues, lead to cancer. Yes. Why are they not banned here? And then my other thought is um, when I was saying like pour that down your oh god. Anyway, so my uh my natural chiropractor that I see down in Albany, he when I was young, he explained this to me this way. And I thought it was actually really interesting that your body, like it might be gross to think about, but like you enter your mouth, you go down your throat, into your stomach, your intestines. I'm sorry. <laughs> um and that's all like it's as outside of your system as your skin is. Like if you were to turn yourself inside out, if you were to turn yourself inside out, that gut lining would be outside like your skin is and your skin would be inside. And it's like the, um, it's like watering a garden. Whatever you put down your throat is going into your garden. Like your body is your garden. It's breaking those walls of your digestive system and going into your body. And what are you pouring into your garden? Like, it's like you were going to pour water on your head and skin and like nurture flowers to bloom out of you. Like you're watering a garden. What are you putting in your body? And I, I like using the analogy, like if you were to put Mountain Dew in your car, would it run? No, it wouldn't run because it's not meant for it. And similarly, like these chemicals that we're putting in our body they were not meant for our bodies. We were meant to eat well. And like, there isn't a single person on this earth. Okay. I'm realizing that that might not be true. I was going to say there isn't a single person on this earth who eats better and wants to go back to eating crap food. That's actually a lie because they do a really good job of making it addictive. And oftentimes I think people don't feel better when they start eating better right off the bat because they don't give it enough time to let their body detoxify from all of the crap that they have been putting in their bodies for yeah. so long. The longer you go eating that stuff, the harder it is to get off of it. It's not impossible. It's very possible. And it's completely worth it in the end. There, like once you get to the point where like, you're not eating processed sugar or um, like processed crap junk food, you actually don't crave it anymore. And you act, I mean, for example, I got takeout the other night because I was just lazy and I got I got ribs and Brussels sprouts, like a very straightforward meal. I didn't get a sauce on the ribs, just dry rub. I felt so sick the next day. So sick. Like my body had like 
the cold sweats, like, I don't know what, like, and I, whenever I eat out now, and I know that there might be oils in it, um, just ingredients that I don't tend to eat now, because I try to eat mainly from my kitchen with ingredients that I'm aware of, my body literally feels it. And it makes me like, it tells me like, no, no, that didn't feel good. Let's not do that again. So I'd like to say when you start eating better, like every single person can't like on this earth, if you start eating better, you're going to start feeling better. It takes time. So I can't say that because not everyone's experienced that. Sometimes there is is literally like a withdrawal period because they put stuff in this food to make it addictive. But it's, it's like that. Like you have to go through the withdrawal to get yourself off of these things that are literally killing us. They're killing us. The food system is killing us. I can't say it enough. A lot of people think that they eat clean. They do. And, but it's, it's really not true. And to that point, I think it is important to give people credit for taking one step at a time. Like if you're eating a a loaf of white bread a week and they change to a loaf of whole wheat bread a week, great. That's amazing. Like that is a huge step. If you're drinking soda every single day and you go to soda twice a week and water the rest of the days, huge step. You have to do these kinds of things in baby steps, but it's true. Like there are a lot of people out there that think like, oh, I bought the low fat cheese. And I'm like, actually that's probably not not great for you like it's better to just eat like grass-fed whole milk cheese than right a crap processed cheese that has low fat so okay. yes I think that the edu- I think the education on nutrition is just completely messed up in our we world have, yeah we have been absolutely miseducated misdirected misguided and People just think that, oh, you know, they sell this in the grocery store so that it ha- it has to be good for me. <laughs> that is natural. It says heart healthy. <laughs> right? I was like, oh, my heavens. <laughs> it's not uh, quite. He says, if it comes from a box, it doesn't belong in your body. It's a pretty good rule of thumb. <laughs> shelf life. What is the shelf life of that food? I'm sorry, but your, your food should not be, like, I... I'm really excited for the farmer's market to come back because yes. um, we're going to, my roommate and I are going to split a share for fledging crow vegetables oh, nice. and just get fresh veggies for the summer. And she's very excited about it too. Um, but I like, I tried to like meal prep for a week at a time. And personally, if your food is lasting, like if you can go to the grocery store and buy groceries that last you a month and you don't have to go back to the grocery store, check yourself. Yeah. <laughs> check yourself. Like, what are you doing? Like, you should not like my food. I have to make sure that I use that food that I get at the beginning of the week by the end of the week, because I don't want it to go bad. That is the food that you want to be eating the fresh stuff that will go bad if you don't use it, because that's how it is in nature. If you don't like, if you don't use lettuce right away from picking the garden in nature, it goes bad. That is the, because as it goes bad, that means that the nutrients are depleting And it's no longer there to nourish you. So think about these like freezer meals. And I personally don't like freezer food because I feel like it just, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan. It does. I don't like when things aren't fresh because I just don't feel like you get as much nutrients from stuff. I do think meat can keep pretty well in the freezer, um, but just frozen, frozen vegetables. I'm not a big fan of, but yeah, I think like if, like Keith said, if you're, if you're eating out of a box, like if, you have a box of macaroni that's been in your cabinet for a year and you're finally opening it up like what are you putting in your body (laughs) like the shelf life of your food should not be in my opinion should not be longer than a week or so and if it is like ask yourself what's in that food Mm -hmm. yeah and just looking on the label it's like the majority of the stuff I can't pronounce I've never heard of like I don't, you know, if I've never heard of this and I can't pronounce it, it's probably not good for me. (laughs) Like it's probably not what I want to put in my body. When people are feeling overwhelmed by starting out on this, like, like, how do I start? Like maybe, maybe you do live out of the cabinet for a month and really there's no shame in that, that like, I haven't always been this conscious about my eating, um, I lived on SpaghettiOs growing up. Like, <laughs> I've never heard of SpaghettiOs. Yeah. Canned tomato soup with little round noodles. Like, yeah. that was life. I loved SpaghettiOs. Um, we ate them. My siblings and I were homeschooled. And that was like, 
it's lunchtime let's make spaghettios annie's boxed mac and cheese like yeah. my mom learned a lot as we grew up and she changed how she shopped and fed us which i didn't appreciate at the time i'll be completely honest um, but now that i've come to appreciate it for myself i do um but it, like if you're there and if you're like well shoot like i don't really eat great if i'm like the way that you're saying like these like i should be checking and maybe i'm finding these ingredients in the food that i have in my fridge that's okay i always say like um like baby steps if you are seeing this in your fridge like don't toss everything out and expect yourself to be perfect the next day like finish the food that you have mm -hmm. when you go to the store don't buy anything to replenish those crappy sources of food buy better sources um because there is like food waste i i'm not a fan of so like i think there's ways that you can properly go about um transitioning but yeah, it, it's just, it's so overwhelming that like, and a lot of it comes down to like be an educated consumer to mm -hmm. like pick up the box, read it. Like how many times are you picking up at the box when you go grocery shopping? Are you just like, oh, that looks good. I'll take it. Like I, when I go into any of the aisles, like if I want a sauce or, or anything, I have, like, I pick it up and read it because I have to make sure that I'm not filling my body with gross things it's so gross you know yeah exactly it's really really sad that you know we we find out that it's all about the money it's all about the money that goes to the to the billionaires and yeah. they really truly do not care about nourishing anyone or anything no that's why and, you have to be an educated consumer because exactly. they are not looking out for your health you are at the end of the day you are the only person looking out for your health yes. and if you're not looking for out for your health you cannot trust these people too because they have proven time and time again that they are not even there's this brand have you ever heard of birch benders mm -mm. there are this um they have this really good pancake mix and i love a good pancake um and i'll make them with like good flour sometimes but flour does like it makes me groggy sometimes so like if I'm training or and I just don't want to eat it sometimes I'll try to like make alternative pancakes with like almond flour or coconut flour or something and birch benders has these pancakes that I absolutely love and I had a package of them in my cabinet for a really long time um and they had no gums they had no added sugars like they're free and clear and so they passed the Anna test they were in my cabinet um so I realized that I was almost out of this mix. So they hold it, they carry this at Hannaford. So I bought another bag. And usually when I buy something of the same brand that I bought before, I don't check the ingredients. Cause I'm like, oh, I bought it before. Like this is clean. So I just grabbed it and walked out. I got home and I ran out of the other package. And I, so I like made those, I threw it out. And another day I was making the ones, the new package. And I was just, I was waiting for them to cook and I was reading the package. They had xanthan gum in them. Oh. And I was like, what? Like, I never would have bought you if I knew you had xanthan gum in them. So you had to have changed their recipe. It, like, I found out that they changed their look and they changed their recipe because I, my roommate even, she remarked, like, I noticed that the two bags were slightly different that you had of those in the cabinet. And I was like, they changed their recipe. And so even brands that you trust, especially if they sell out to a bigger company or a organization, those people are going to water down those quality foods with things that make them cheaper, make them go further, make them make more money. You cannot allow, like even brands that you trust, you have to keep watching them and call them out on it. Like make sure that you are being an advocate for yourself because you cannot, that just goes to show like you cannot trust other people to do what's right for you. You have to do what's right for yourself. It's so frustrating that we're there, but I think it is also a lesson to be learned that like you gotta, you have to be the one putting this into play. You can't rely on someone else to make yourself healthy, Precisely. right? Yes. You cannot, you cannot put the pressure on someone else for your health. Exactly. Like, Nobody I, else is responsible for your body. Your, yeah. It's your body, mind, and soul. And you are the one 
that is in charge of all three pieces of yourself. And it's not three parts of yourself. It's all one, all three parts, body, mind, and soul work all completely together. You cannot separate them. And, no. you know, when we look at the world the way it is, and we see the the billionaires who are in charge of making all the decisions for everyone, you know, we see that, hmm, they are now the ones that are owning all the land. They are the ones that own the big chemical companies like Monsanto and, and all of that. They're the ones that are genetically modifying the food. And they're also the ones that own the pharmaceutical companies. Huh. So now we start driving people in the directions that we want them to go. I worked at a marketing firm when I first graduated college. And I learned a lot of valuable things that I would never go back and change my trajectory ever. I like it, anything in my past, I would never change because like I said earlier in this episode, um, everything, every life experience prepares you for the present. But I never realized to what extent healthcare was a business because some of our biggest clients were hospitals, like a, an entire hospital system. And we were literally marketing. I remember there was a, can a new cancer doctor that came on and we were marketing to people to go get screened for cancer. And like, like all, like we were marketing to people to go to the hospital, like it was a place of business rather than a place of care. And at the, at the first I was like shocked. I was like, I thought hospitals were like there to help people. But now like I'm seeing behind the scenes of we're literally creating banners and ads, like targeting web ads to people to let people know that there's a new doctor here that specializes in this and you should go visit them. Like they have no reason to, but you like, what? Like, yeah, I, I was baffled by it. Um, and that's when I realized, and now like working in a marketing firm changes your perspective on a lot. I never understood like the tactics behind commercials. Now I completely see like the mind games they're trying to play with people. Yeah. I hate to admit they work. Like they work the what people do with marketing, it works. Um, and as a social media manager, I actually have the freedom to make sure that I am only working with people that I align with. So I try to make that a priority. Um, like Lisa and and other places in town that I help, I make sure that I'm not backing something that I don't agree with their mission. Mm -hmm. But it is when that experience um, opened my eyes to how messed up this whole thing is. Like we are literally marketing to people to be sick. Exactly. Every <laughs> other commercial on TV, you have a brand new drug for a brand new disease. Where do all these brand new diseases come from? Yet they very, very little talk about how important exercise and diet is in preventing every single one of those diseases. Right. And if anybody was paying any attention, like we would not be having foods in our markets that are sprayed with all kinds of toxic pesticides and chemicals. You know, we just we have such a, a society that is just so accepted. Oh, if the government says it's OK, then it's OK. Well, guess what, folks? It's not OK. <laughs> it's literally not okay that's another example of you cannot trust them to do what's best for you like you, you are the only one at the end of the day that can do that you have to look out for yourself so yeah yeah keith says <laughs> he says the first commercial i saw for a pharmaceutical said ask your doctor to prescribe it freaked me out i was like uh oh there we go <laughs> it's true i love yeah. that you say pharmaceutical yeah, actually that's so true that's true. Ask, ask your daughter, ask your doctor today. And then they do, then they <laughs> go into the, 
if you want to take this, make sure you don't, <laughs> you don't move, you don't breathe or else you might die in the next 24 hours. <laughs> like, right, exactly. Possible side effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah no, that's, it's, it's crazy. I actually don't watch TV. I, <laughs> I didn't watch stream TV all that much because for that re like you're watching 40% of your program, whatever you're watching, your movie, your TV show and 60% commercials. And all those commercials are, are crap food. Um, like pharmaceutical, like drugs and like the occasional, like, I don't know, the occasional like vacation one or I don't know. Yeah. Like I finally got to the point where I could not, I couldn't stomach the commercials anymore. I couldn't handle having that invasive energy thrown at me every five minutes. I'm like, I cannot do this. I was, I was watching TV the other night with my friend and they, we were watching basketball and they said, why? I've never understood why, like, on basketball and like programs where you would think athletes are watching, why do they endorse things like Sprite and stuff that like athletes, you would think athletes wouldn't be using if they were smart and knew what's good for them. And I was like, well, if you think about it, when you go to a basketball game, the crowd that goes to a basketball game where are they getting their food and what kind of food is it? They're eating the food at the stadium. Yep. It's Sprite and burgers and nachos with fake cheese and hot burritos dogs. and hot dogs and horrible food. So yeah. really the commercials that they're feeding to their viewers on TV are no different than the viewers that are actually there present at the game. So in their mind, they're feeding the same, um, the same crowd, but I think that, and I hate to say this, I think that people who are athletes, who are aware of nutrition, you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked. In my time being a ski racer growing up, I was a D1 ski racer in college. I have done multiple, like I did track, I did cross country. I, I'm like, I'm doing the iron, like the people that you come across in these same environments like sports and stuff you would be shocked at what they just like they just throw in their body with like no thought you would be shocked that you like you'd think that crowd would be um a little bit more aware about it but they're like <laughs> I I said to him I was like I hate to say it but we're outliers in this crowd like we're <laughs> Not everyone who watches basketball and who is an athlete understands that Sprite is not good for you. Like we're outliers here, which is crazy to say in athletes who are outliers of like actually being aware of nutrition, but yeah, it's a disparity and definitely needs, it needs a lot more help. And I, I don't think, I honestly don't think it's going to come from everyone advocating for themselves because humans are lazy and it's sad, but like people are lazy and they're not going to go out and learn for them. A lot of people are not going to go out and learn from themselves. I think that it's only, it's going to come from the food system, the people that are actually running the food system, those people transitioning into like the people who are there transitioning out and good people coming in because from, it's going to trickle down, but there's so much on top of down here that it's going to be really hard to resist up. So I personally think that the, the solvent needs to come from the food system and the people who are creating the rules behind it yeah. rather than expecting people. I mean, it, I do think it's important to be an educated consumer and like advocate for yourself. But the reality is that people aren't going to do that. So I think that the real solution is going to come from like there being a shift in what is actually offered to people and like things that are crappy actually being like banned. I think that is where the solution is gonna come from. Yeah, you know, and I mean, it really, it really does come down to, you know, educating the society and showing people how this society is actually set up and who is running all of it. Because big 
big harma, big, you know, the food system, all of it, it it's all being run by the same group of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most people don't want to look at this group of people, you know, these people who are deep into the state and they don't want to see it. And, but once we start to see it, all we have to do is take those people out of their positions of power, stop allowing them to make all of the decisions and get people who actually are care about our health and the earth. And, you know, when we start taking command and we start taking control, then we're the ones that want to live in peace and harmony with organic things that grow for free out of the earth and to share with each other and care about each other. So, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to that as we go through this shift of consciousness, because that's where we're going. That is where we will end up because the shift is in full swing now. And this is where we're going. We who are the light bringers to this planet are going to make sure that we raise the vibration high enough that everybody can start to see what's actually ailing us. <laughs> so that we can heal ourselves, our bodies, and our planet, and our society, so that we can live in a nurturing environment, so that we all feel safe, we all feel nurtured, we all feel heard and respected. And then our health is going to take a massive upturn and this earth is going to be the most incredible planet in the entirety of all creation because this is the potential for this grand and glorious planet yeah and we deserve this we deserve to live our best lives in our best bodies on the best planet <laughs> yep it's true it's really true and we're 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 the start of it. It only takes one person to change the world. There you go. That's so it. there's two of us and a lot more behind us. So you got it. Yeah. We can each change our own world. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, Brenny, you're very welcome. Glad you love the conversation. Beautiful. So Anna, thank you so much for coming on this morning and having this great conversation. I hope that people found it to be of value. Next time you go to the grocery store, look and see, are you buying foods that are being grown with life force energy? Are you buying the foods that are filled with living life force energy? Because when you buy those foods and you consume those foods, you can literally consume far, far less food and be far more fulfilled and satiated than buying a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't have any living life force energy and you end up eating tons and tons and tons of food because it doesn't have any living life force energy. One ingredient, one ingredient foods. A pepper is a pepper, right. butter is butter. Uh, a burger is burger, as long as, there's no fillers or anything in the meat, but just look for single ingredient foods. Mm -hmm. A really good way to start. <laughs> exactly. Make sure that you can pronounce everything <laughs> on the box. Make sure that you recognize the ingredients. Yeah. Beautiful. And Keith says, I hope to meet you, Anna, when we come to Lake Placid. Keith and Mara are going to spend their summer here. We're so oh, excited yeah. about that. So cool. it's going to be amazing. Awesome. We'll have to make that happen. <laughs> yes, definitely looking forward to that. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us for another Solution Sunday. I'm Lisa Warner. I am the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing. And my guest today has been Anna Lucia Izzo. And Anna, if people want to reach out to you and learn more, where can they find you? Sure. So my website is holybanana.com, W-H-O-L-L-Y. B-A-N-A-N-N-A.com. Um, my email is Anna at holybanana.com. So feel free to reach out to me there. I'm also, my, my main platform is Instagram. So if you are on Instagram, 
um, at Holy Banana is my handle. And that's where I share most of my journey and my experience with the struggles of my past, but also how I am blooming into a brand new future. So, Ah, uh, we love that. And Anna is a fabulous virtual assistant. So she is the one that has been helping me with my website, my newsletters, and all, putting all of my class materials online. So I'm always very grateful to have such a beautiful virtual assistant on my team. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Until next week, create for yourselves a great week. Bye for now.